If you were going blind and marijuana could help your condition, would you use it? Going blind is a very scary proposition. I was legally growing marijuana. I was at the top of the mountain. I'm kind of embarrassed about being here. The problem was, I was so naive that I thought the truth would set you free. So I spouted out the truth everywhere I went. I have to have the marijuana for my eyesight. Besides believing in it, I knew it was saving my eyesight. It scared the shit out of me going blind, you know what I mean? I guess I'll have to leave to some country where marijuana is legal. I had a point to prove, and I, I, I was trying to prove it in America. It didn't work out so good. <laughs> If you were going blind and marijuana could help your condition, would you use it? The man suffers from glaucoma and says marijuana is the only medication that will save his sight. He's left with just two alternatives, smoke marijuana or go blind. It's probably one of the most sophisticated operations I've seen in this area. But when the feds found out, they had him thrown in jail. The Indiana, I went to six different federal prisons in a year, you know, I was moved around a lot. It was trying to keep me out from the media. A lot of the TV stories, like 60 Minutes, that are uh, blinded by justice. It was a good personal interest story, that's what it was, you know. And, and plus, I was a veteran, you know, decorated veteran. There's people in America today in prison for the rest of their life, only with three marijuana charges. You know, they never killed nobody or did nothing, but uh, three strikes and you're out and life in prison. So I had two strikes, I didn't want to take a chance. I'm going blind, I got to leave the country. They wiped me out financially, they wiped me out emotionally, you know. James Burton is so angry, he says he will leave the United States and go to Holland, where pot is legal for treating glaucoma. That's when he gets out of jail. I was in Nirvana. I was at the top of the mountain. I had, you know, 5,000 plants. We had clones. I had 22 employees. And uh, a dream come true because I was legally growing marijuana. I was a pioneer. I had tried to set the standards for because when I came to Holland, nobody was testing marijuana for any standards. I mean, they just, you had the White Widow and you had this, but what THC or what I had, they, nobody had a clue. Um, I think it's important that you have organically growing, pesticide-free, quality, stabilized, standardized cannabis for medicine. And I imagine most of the European Union in the next five years will have legal cannabis medicine. Even in the beginning, I was convinced more than anybody else because I could visually see it. I had a good going business. People were happy, patients were being healed, and then the government came along and just took everything away. Now the world's first scheme offering cannabis on prescription for pain relief may be on the brink of collapse. What's gone wrong? Um, basically the government has priced themselves out of the market. Uh, marijuana on the street or by a coffee shop is half the price of the same quality. I didn't want to be part of the program because I thought at nine and a half euros they were ripping people off, you know, and it wasn't a lot of the marijuanas they needed. I wasn't in favor of the gamma rain. I wasn't in favor of the five year old grand pot. That's coffee shop philosophy. Cannabis produced by Burton is sold by pharmacists to people desperate to alleviate pain. It wasn't about the money, because I didn't end up with no money. I probably grew more marijuana than most people, but I don't have, don't have a lot of money. But I wasn't in it for the money. I was in it to prove a point and a passion. And, and you get the burning desire to do it. I, I figured if I sold it to the government two and a half, they doubled the money and sold it for five, we would have been swarmed with patients. Um, we have to pay tax, 17.5% tax on the mm -hmm. marijuana we sell. Right. So really the patient is really paying only less than five guilders a gram and the rest is, is tax. And the government is happy. And the government <laughs> is happy, yes. I sold it for two and a half euros because I wanted the program to work because I knew it had to be under the coffee shop market, not above the coffee shop market. I think if the program could have went a different direction, where all from the beginning I said one variety, they said one variety is all we're doing. So then I finally said, okay, we're not a malapi, we'll put in two, but two varieties. I mean, that's not enough. It doesn't cover all the diseases. In a matter of a couple of months, 1,500 people just disappeared. It all went up in a puff of smoke. 
I'm in the process now with uh, some lawyers and we're going to sue the government for their mismanagement, their misleading of patients, the decision to radiate the marijuana and I hope to get some damages back because I invested all my money in 10 years of my company in, into this program which they have basically made it a, it a failure. Even today, if I started growing and started selling marijuana for three euros with my reputation, pest-free and blah, 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 tested by T&O, I think I could close down the BMC today. I was naive. I thought the truth would really set you free. But some people and some governments don't want to hear the truth. So if you're speaking the truth, they want to get rid of you or, or shut you up, you know, because some situations that this, that's better left unsaid. I used to brag on the Dutch, you know, I thought tolerance, liberal, this is marijuana land, you know. And, and now I kind of stick my head in the sand, I'm kind of embarrassed about being here. Stay tuned to Cannabis News Network. Your source of Cannabis News. Cannabis News Network.